Hey boys and girls, I'm 13 here. This is for my Patreon. Um, no, actually this is for my main channel. Uh, this is a life update. Um, this, I'm riding my uh, old Cygnus. I haven't ridden this in a few years actually. It's been, I still own it. <laughs> this is the, the scooter that I had my big crash on. So the, this, these marks here and these marks over here from my big crash. I had a guy on, on my last tour, I gave him this bike to ride and he's like, oh, you're giving me the unlucky bike. And I'm like, Okay, fine, dude. And I put him on a different one, and then uh, and then he crashed on the other one. And the person that rode this bike, of course, didn't have a problem because this bike has aftermarket front suspension, rear suspension. It's actually in really good shape, even though it looks a bit messy. And one of my Australian guests decided to cover my entire scooter with Honda, it's a Yamaha, and he covered it with Honda stickers <laughs> and Australian stickers. No worries, mate. And uh, crikey, kangaroos, next 10 kilometers. Um, she'll be right, mate. What's this one down here? <laughs> Someone, what's coming off? Oh, another kangaroo one. Yeah, his scooter is in a map of Australia over here, I think that is. Either that or it's like a, a dolphin with cancer. Uh, so, what's been up with me? I've been busy. I've been busy 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 for the last few months like I had a tour and then I have mini tours and then I got people just uh, staying at my house um, oh yeah and the title of this thing my my new scooter the force that I love so much I really do love it it's like it's the best vehicle I've ever owned it's maybe not the most fun vehicle I've ever owned. The most fun vehicle I've ever owned was a 250 two-stroke, the Yamaha TZR 250 two-stroke. That was that was a fun vehicle. And I and my first vehicle ever was a Yamaha Seika 400 cc. I had so much fun on that. My first motorcycle ever. So those two would probably be the most fun I ever owned. Coolest bike I ever owned was a CBR 600 double R. And it had a really, 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 really nice exhaust on it. Like it was the, the nicest sounding exhaust that I've ever heard ever on any bike. And I've never heard one as good as it since. And that was on the bike that I own myself. And it was just, I, I was, yeah. But that was about it with that bike, you know? I, it was, it sounded nice. Yay. And that was about it. It was, mm. my Ninja 650 is a very practical bike it's good uh, I had it race ready because I, I used to do track days on my Ninja 650 a lot I used to take it to the track all the time so I had race tires on it and I I had to get this I, I put a lot of work into the suspension on my Ninja 650 so right now it's like track worthy it, 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 it runs on rails I think is the expression it goes ex exactly where you want it to go and you can lean it as much as you want to even on not so great surfaces and it, it, it it doesn't uh, seesaw at all, and it seesawed a lot <laughs> when I when it was stock, like the Ninja 650. One of these one of these days, I'm gonna go down this road. Should we do it now? Let's do it now. I'm feeling a little bit crazy. This lit this this road literally says, "Do not enter vicious dogs military." That's what the sign says. Do not enter. I had my son read it for me. Something like, "Do not enter dead end vicious dogs." <laughs> And I'm wearing flip-flops, so we're good to go. Totally gonna get attacked. I'm literally scared at this point, because the sign does say that. It says something about the military, something about attack dogs, and do not enter. <laughs> and I'm doing it in flip-flops, so. Do I have a weapon on me? No, I don't. Sometimes I have a weapon. Oh, I hear dogs. Shit, 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 shit. Ooh. I hear dogs. That's not military, that's just some guy's house. This is totally suspicious. This is sus, man. Oh, great, the gate's open. Like, why would somebody have a sign saying, do not enter attack dogs? And then there's just like a bunch of houses down here. Like, which one of these houses is dealing in like crystal meth? Shit, shit, shit. Oh, hi. Hi, buddy. Are you guys attack dogs? Yeah? Well, that's about it. That's a dead end. Hi! You want to buy me? You guys are vicious. This is actually kind of anticlimactic. Yeah. You gonna chase? You can chase. You can chase me for a bit. Hmm. Okay, that was anticlimactic. But I was scared because the sign is very foreboding. 
and my fucking GPS. I got like Bluetooth in this helmet. I, I don't know if you guys can hear it beeping. No, you probably, you might be able to. I got like GPS in this, uh, Bluetooth in this helmet and it broke. So I can't turn it off. And for some reason it's reacting to my voice and it's constantly making beeping sounds. As far as I can tell, none of the buttons do anything. I'm trying to adjust it. Anyway, so my, uh, yeah, my brand new scoot. Answering mode voice. I don't think that's what I wanted. Um, so my, yeah, my Yamaha Force scooter. That is like, yeah, it's it's just it's it's the uh, fuck this. I'm unplugging my my fucking. Oh, hold on. Uh, there we go. I unplugged the the Bluetooth unit. I've got like a loose wire hanging from the side of my head, but whatever. It's better than it constantly beeping in my ear. It's like voice acti voice activated in my Bluetooth, so when I speak, it thinks that that's me trying to connect to somebody, so then it like beeps to let me know I'm not connected or something, and it's just like, so I, as I'm talking to you, it's constantly beeping in my ear. I disconnected it though. Um, so yeah, the Yamaha Force, like I, I, had, I had a customer that rode like a sports bike in England, like a, a GSX-R 750 or something, and then he rode my Force scooter, and he's like, yeah, when I get back to England, I'm selling my sports bike and buying one of these if I can. Like, that's how good of a scooter it is. Um, you can't, hi guys, you can't get the Force model in, um, in many countries. I think it's pretty much only available in Taiwan. Uh, the closest thing to it would be the Yamaha S-Max, which is available. I saw one in Canada, so if, it's, if you can buy it in Canada, I'm pretty sure you can buy it anywhere. And, yeah. So, so anyways, yeah, my, my, my Force went down today. Uh, but not with me riding it. <laughs> I gave it to a friend and he's riding it all around the country. I gave it to him along with my GPS and my GPS has like, you know, 10 years worth of, well, that's an exaggeration. No, about seven, well, seven years, seven years worth of my touring experience and all the best places to visit in Taiwan. I just added a few on recently too. Which is always surprising to me because I kind of I've, I kind of feel like I already know all the best spots, but I found a few new ones recently, which is another uh, recent uh, occurrence and re recent new event in my life. I got I got hired to do uh, videography for a production company with my drone. Yeah, there's just they were shooting a they were shooting a documentary for the government and they needed a, a drone pilot so they hired me i've been getting better with it i've been practicing it's being a drone videographer is not so much about flying skill although that 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 does come into play of course it's more about uh just being able to get a specific shot because like, they'll explain to you what they want and everything has to be really really smooth like one one if you're if you're if you're getting a a, a video shot and you, one small jerk of the controls or one like moving the camera too quickly just for a half a second and the whole shot's ruined you got to like start over again it's 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 literally like that you have to do it you have to be really really smooth with the controls and used to the controls to be smooth in the first place and get the shot that you want so yeah but i've been practicing and I went out a couple of days before the shoot and I, I spent the whole day just getting in practice shots, pretending I was recording something and trying to do it perfectly each time. And then, uh, yeah, I did, I did good. I did good. Uh, there was some hard, the, 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 there was a bit, some of the videos were a bit too noisy or whatnot, but that, that was more hardware limitations than anything to do with my skill. But uh, we tried our best to, or I tried my best to, to uh, adjust the settings and whatnot and, and work out how to get the best possible shot. The Mavic camera is good, but it's not really, you know, film worthy. So, if you're doing something for a film company, you, it's, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to do some uh, upgrading in, 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 in the editing to the quality. But you can only edit upwards so much. <sighs> so yeah, lots going on with me, and I got. Uh, just people wanting to travel with me around the island, and, and and people coming to stay at my to stay to visit me. I got a guy coming from England. I think I don't know when. Oh, he's coming on my birthday. My birthday is next month. He arrives on my birthday. I got a couple of guys from America that are just just busy. And then I uh, a friend of mine asked if I could substitute some English classes teaching, and I haven't. I 
I, I said yes, even though I don't really want to. But I don't know. I just I think it's good for me to uh, mix up my weekly activities. So even though I'd much rather just stay at home, <laughs> play video games, uh, I agreed to riding my scooter for 30 minutes to a school and teaching snotty nose kids for a couple of hours and then riding back for a half hour. Um, but yeah, I need, you know, and I need, I need the money, of course, but yeah, but it was nice it was doing the production thing. Uh, I'm in a good mood right now. Everything is going pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to go visit my son right now. I need my, my ex is taking a, a vacation, her first vacation in her first time leaving the country in, in years. She's going to uh, Thailand with her sister. So she asked if she could borrow a camera off me and I'm gonna give her one. And that's about it. Uh, my son's birthday just went by. I got him a Switch, which was expensive for me. So uh, what I did was I kind of promised myself I was supposed to get a new camera, uh, no, not a new camera, a new phone for myself. I've had my, my two-year contract is up as of last month, so I was looking forward to getting a new phone. But my phone still works fine. I, it, I don't have any problems with it. So I, 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 I thought instead of getting myself a phone, I'm going to get myself, my son, a Switch. And I enjoy the Switch as well, so it's a double bonus. He gets to use it, I get to use it. So that's nice. That's, the, that's ooh. That's a Yamaha Cygnus in front of us with a custom tail light. I was looking custom paint job, custom tail light. It's nice, custom exhaust. It's the same scooter I'm riding, except without all the Australian crap. <laughs> but look at the nice exhaust on it, or tail light. Hey, these guys, I'm pretty sure these guys were riding with me earlier and we split up and then I met back up with them again. But yeah, that's nice, look at it. Custom, red, custom uh, suspension on the front and rear, both color red. Custom red paint. Nice like glazed, glazed, darker cherry red, and then he's got like red highlights all along the side there. Red center stand, red tip to his exhaust. That's 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 nice looking, really classy. Like sometimes when people all modify their scooters, they go overboard and it gets really kind of tacky. But I, I like the look of that. And his rims too. He's got red rims, aftermarket rims on it. And then, of course, you got a Yamaha 150cc geared motorcycle next to him. So, yeah. This is my update for YouTube. I know I really haven't been uploading much lately. I did, you know, I, I did, a, I did a, a tour of the island uh, last month, and then, and then I, had a, I, had, I had like a private tour, and then I had a, a full tour, and then I had another private tour. It was just, just busy. And then uh, I think next week my my ex is going away to on vacation, so I got to take care of my son all next week. So I'll be I'll be busy with that as well. Yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Uh, as far as my injuries go, if anybody still wonders about that, um, I ran the other day, and and I supposedly didn't look retarded. So that's a good thing. Shout out to Espen, you piece of shit. Espen is a tour guest that came out here once and he saw me run and then he laughed at me and said I looked retarded and, and literally made me cry. Nothing good, nothing like making fun of your handicapped friend. Hey Espen, hey Espen. So supposedly I, 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 I look normal now when I, when I run or jog, which is an improvement. And, uh, but my knee seems to be getting worse with time and there's nothing I can really do about that. It's, and it's, it's, it's kind of depressing. I know that it's just going to get worse and worse. And uh, the thing about that is there was nothing wrong with my knee to begin with. The doctor said he noticed like, oh, a little hairline fracture and he thought it would be best to wrap my kneecap in barbed wire. And I'm exaggerating a tiny bit, but no, it was pretty much the quality and and I can show you later like maybe I can edit it in when I get home it, it looked like fucking barbed wire and they wrapped it around my knee and that was to protect my knee from a little tiny hairline fracture but here's the thing when my knee had that tiny little hairline fracture both my legs were broken so I wasn't going to be using that knee anyways I, I didn't I didn't even bend that leg from for like two months after the crash 
Like I couldn't put any weight on that leg. I couldn't walk on that leg. So why the fuck did he need to wrap my knee in barbed wire? He didn't need to, in other words. It would have just, if I was lying in bed for the next month anyways, it would have 100% healed on its own. And it would have been perfectly fine and perfectly normal. Because there was, there was nothing wrong with it other than a little hairline fracture. But he decided to wrap it in wire. He didn't tell me when to take the wire out. So, and I'm guessing I probably should have taken the wire out like a month or two later. But I didn't take it out for a year. And, because uh, no one told me when to take it out. And I just kind of realized, you know, I had a lot on my plate at the time. So when I finally did realize to take the wire out, it was a year later and the wire had probably just destroyed everything in and around my knee. So, yeah, so now my knee is completely fucked. And it's, it, it's funny because, you know, well, other than my missing fingers, of course, uh, like the crash didn't really do any, look or didn't do much long-term damage to me. And the only thing that's really messed up is my knee. And the knee was 100% done by the doctors, not by the crash. And people wonder why I don't trust Western medicine that much. Oh, it's nuts, it's nuts. I took a guy, I took, I took a, I, speaking of which, I took, I took two people to my, my Eastern doctor, my Qigong doctor, uh, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday I took, I took some people there, and, uh, same as always. Look at all the flowers. Look at the flowers, guys. Look at all the flowers! Same as always, there was the, the, the doctor just worked miracles on them. I, I took, the, there was a 62-year-old man, 62, I, th I think 62, and, uh, you know, his back was hunched and, and whatever, and he works construction, he has bad posture, and they worked on him for a little bit, and then he said, you know, for the first time in a long time, his knee didn't hurt, he, his son noticed that he was standing straighter, that his dad was magically like an inch or two taller than he'd been in, in, in you know, taller than he'd been in the last 10, 20 years. Like, it's just, it sounds like a chiropractor, but it isn't. It's, uh, he, he's, he's similar to a chiropractor, except 10, 20 times more effective. Because he does very, he, do, he does two things. He, he does chiropractic combined with, like, kind of acupuncture, but he, does, he doesn't use needles, so it's like acupressure. So it's chiropractic combined with acupressure. So, see, the problem is, is you go to a chiropractor, he moves your bones, and he makes things better, but the problem is all the muscles around the bones, like say he realigns your spine, that's great. So your, your spine feels good, you feel better for a little bit, but the problem is all the muscles around the spine are all still used to the spine being in an incorrect position and they're all tensed up in a way that kind of pushes it back in that position. So by the next day, pretty much, your spine is out of whack again. So not only does this guy like realign your bones, he also uses acupressure to stimulate nerves to relax the muscles around those bones and to like, he, so he kind of like moves the muscles and the bones. And uh, so you actually become normal and then it stays normal. Like you don't need to, like with most chiropractors, if you got back troubles and shit, chiropractors, they, they do do good. But you have to like go back every week or yeah. Yeah, usually it's like once a week, come back next week, come back next week, and you gotta go every week, and every week they feel better, but then a week later it, go, it goes bad again. With, with my guy, you see him once, and he fixes it. And then he'll give you like maybe an exercise to do, and a few food suggestions, and then if you just follow his advice, then it'll, you'll never need to visit him again. And the thing with, and then people say, oh, he's a scam, it's fake, it's fraud, blah, 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 it's just, it's just a con. He doesn't accept money. <laughs> my guy doesn't take money from anyone. He doesn't accept money. He, he has his own business that is totally separate to it. He does it just to help people. That's it. So this con man doesn't take any money from anyone. And he has his own business. He's, 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 he's a successful businessman. Uh, he drives a Mercedes S-Class. He owns uh, four houses that I know of. You know. And he doesn't take new patients either. So that's another thing too. I get the odd person being like, oh, I'm in Taiwan. Give me the name and address of your, your, your Qigong guy. Uh, dude, he's retired. He doesn't take new people. Okay, well then you spend a day of your time to, to come pick me up here and take me to him. <laughs> are you gonna, you know, are you, are, you, are you booking me for a tour? No, I don't need a tour. I've, I've been to Taiwan lots of times. I just want to go visit your Qigong. Well, go fuck off, man. <laughs> it's like, you know. 
he sees my friends because they're my friends. He's retired. He doesn't take new patients, period. Okay? And if you're if you're hiring me for a day tour or whatever, then yeah. You know, for, and it, people are so... I've had a couple people do that to me. And it's like, dude, you're literally like... For the price you pay me for a tour, the doctor alone is worth more than that. So you're pretty much paying for the doctor and, and getting this whole full day tour thrown in for free. It's like... Anyways, yeah, I don't know if that guy still watches my videos, but there was a guy recently who was, we, we had that pretty much same conversation. He just, yeah, I don't want you, I just want your buddy. And it's like, well, he's not going to see you unless you're with me. He doesn't, um, yeah, so this is kind of a long update. Uh, I'm going to cut it because this video is getting too long. Uh, YouTube screwing me because the, the new YouTube algorithm is that they don't really promote you unless you upload daily and if you don't upload daily then you're not a current channel and uh, your videos need to be like 10 to 15 minutes long for them to be worth their time and worth the advertisers time so yeah so I haven't been uploading much lately because I've been busy and my videos are normally only like five minutes long but yeah, I'm gonna, I think this is about 50 minutes, if not more. So I'm going to call it. Uh, thanks to everybody who's still watching. Love you guys. Oh, I don't like to say that. I hate it when people say, oh, I love all my fans. But I don't know. I'm in a good mood. Love all you guys. Hope. Thanks for your support. Hope to see you in the future.